<clears throat> okay. Be back again, same day. It's night time. I wanted to keep playing. Um I forget what this check is for the forging the letter. Take the legal documents oh, out well. of the envelope. A 12 to 40 month construction. Oh, it's pretty damn high. I have no points in interfacing. Hmm. Minus four authority is so funny. All right, well, talk to the kids. The scruffy haired little boy kicks a stone. He can't be more than five years old. The other one looks indistinguishable from him. He watches his brother kick the stone with his tongue lolling out of his mouth. It must be Lillian's twins. This one doesn't say anything. Kicking the concrete with his worn out sneaker. Lily's our mom. I already said that. The stone kicker laughs suddenly. His head is too large for his shoulders. The other one laughs as well. Maybe there's some kind of reason why they're laughing. An interesting reason somehow tied to the case. Of course. What are you laughing about? The boy stops laughing and looks at his toes. Oh, okay. So now he's shy. Now he's not talking. Just wobbling around like he's afraid of something. You guys look identical. The stone kicking one becomes frantic all of a sudden. As if that's something to be scared of. The obvious fact that you just stated. He Children. Just like me. Yeah, I said that. The boy doesn't answer. His brother throws another rock. Both of their hair is covered in some kind of dirt. The rock kicker was just being shy, but now he's enthusiastic again. You're bad with kids. What are you, Kid Master General? Maybe I am. Now, how about some actual police work? We are not getting anything here. Bye, kids. Take care. The scruffy haired little boy. Oh, I need the, uh... There aren't any bottles around these guys for me to pick up. They're literally drinkers. This is a wonderful song, by the way. Vibes are immaculate. Feel safe and warm in here, not like outside. Okay, well, I don't want to take the... Industrial coal pellets burn with an orange glow. Hello, mister. She clutches a small stuffed animal. Occasionally, she twirls it around. Are you Lillian's daughter? Yes, I am. Little Lily. Do you know my mom? Not really, but I'd like to. Uh-huh. Mom is great. You know what's great about my mom? No, do tell me. Everything. <laughs> She's so cute. Are the twins outside your brothers? Yes. They don't want to play with me. They're older and play outside. They look the same. <laughs> Sometimes I can't tell them apart. They look identical, right? I said the same thing. They look identical. <laughs> What's that? It's a grouse. You might be able to get on God's good side if you replace the broken skewer you almost certainly broke. Yes, but what's it for? 
I don't know. Can I have it? I know someone who really likes stuffed birds. Sure. Just go and get it. I don't like it anyway. It looks angry. What's that thing you're holding? It's Lammy. He's my friend. So. It's like a sheep. I... Lamby is a stuffed lamb that, admittedly, has seen better days. One of the eye buttons is missing, and the fur is tattered in several parts. Okay, well, pleased to meet you, Lammy. Lammy usually doesn't like strangers, but you're also fuzzy, like Lammy. <laughs> Bye! Ruffed Grouse Taxidermy. Dead body of a grouse stuffed with some unknown material. From a distance, it might just pass off as the real thing. The bird looks ex itself looks extremely ruffled and slightly grumpy. Cool. All right. Well, I'm gonna walk around. Is that a battle? I sp I spied. No, that's a shovel. Really different. Rusty Eaton Leonard's read Mazut. Mazut. Your attire of a motor carriage adorns these reeds. You should come back here when it snows. A strange feeling. It passes quickly. Looking back at you from the rust colored water, you. Unlock the church. Kick drum pulse. The music is coming from somewhere on the ice. A school of fish huddle around the fence post and scatter into the dark. Try and title Sam this child. And Mikhail noticed the windows, especially with how there are no windows on the south side. This was to deal with. You officers, come to investigate the historic subtext of West Martinez? I'm Khan Heilostam. You must be Kim Kitsuragi, right? I was just telling my son about this building. Not a lot of people realize the historic significance here. Very rich in hypertext. Nice to meet you. Hold on, hypertext? Yes, hypertext. Young Carp and the collection of cultural hyperlinks. He's just making up fancy words. <laughs> this doesn't mean anything. Wait, what was that about the windows before? Oh yes, so Mikhail. They had to deal with monitor glare, especially in the summer. They still had vector monitors back then. That was 49 years ago. So they didn't have windows on the south wall. You and Kim know each other? No, I can't say that we've met before, but I've heard of Kim, of course. Mikhail, say hi to the officers. Mikhail's a little tired today. We spent all night trying to run Orbis on his radio computer. Have you heard of it? It's a programming language used in Grad. Quite tricky, but he wanted to play this Grad made adventure program. We've been getting really into worms lately. But I assume you're not here for giant worms when there are so many real things to see. Just as I was telling Mikhail before, this is where the Coalition landed in 08. We could be standing on what is the most interesting landmark in Revachol West. This man is your half-brother. You feel it. But why? What's so fascinating about an empty old building? Aha! But it's not just any empty old building. What not a lot of people know is, this used to be the R&D department of Felt Electrical. And Felt, which now sells ink cartridges mostly, was once a top dog in the turn of the century cybernetics boom. Hold on, what's R&D? It looks old and weathered, with seagulls picking apart its stone and metal carcass. Bushy undergrowth has taken hold of the collapsed rooftop. Some kind of bird has set up a nest on a broken windowsill. 
Wait, what's an R&D department? Apologies, it's an acronym for research and development. <laughs> they don't use it anymore. You're probably more familiar with RTD, research and technological development. Mayor Kalpa, you are not familiar with that one either. This man is a bookhead. I don't think I've ever heard of this Feld Electrical. That's not surprising. Only a vestigial ink cartridge and ferrotape manufacturer remains. They started out as a midway electronics outfit in Königstein two centuries ago. After an aggressive move to Revachol, Feld became a global player in the emerging personal electronics market of the pre-revolutionary era. Still, Tricentennial was beating them in business machines. But Feld had an ace up their sleeve. Or should I say they were developing an ace up their sleeve? I'm mixing my metaphors here. What was that ace? It was here in Martinez, possibly in this very building, that they developed prototypes for a tape computer. A tape computer? Mm hmm An elegant folding mechanism of rollers and ferrotape ribbons, portable enough to be a take-it-home solution. Revolutionizing business machines, possibly even bring them to the average consumer, which is a feat of engineering even today's giants, Rehm, ICN, and Zam, haven't achieved yet. He assumes something like a combat stance, facing the wind. What happened? Indeed. What? The revolution! Unfortunately, their moonshot project never made it to the market. Feld's move to Revachol backfired. The revolutionary government liquefied their assets and expropriated those very advanced prototypes. Possibly from this very building, or one of the adjacent ruins. All of this was built by Feld, even a boardwalk. While Pines built Martinez proper as a resort for their middle management, Feld built this side of town for R&D. You're saying that Feld Electrical built this boardwalk? Yes, they even built a pleasure wheel, but that got destroyed in the war. A pleasure wheel? Perhaps reminded of a childhood memory. It's clear he would prefer there were a big wheel lighting up the coast. Yes, to lure in their star engineers. This part of Martinez was nothing but reeds before it felt the right. They had to make the prospect of living here attractive. It was supposed to become a global center for innovation in cybernetics. But history had other plans. What happened to the engineers, the company people? Oh, I'm afraid it didn't end well for the boys. But this story is a bit too dark for little Mikael here. Now, if you were to ask about tape computers... What did the revolutionaries do with those advanced tape computers? They used them for military communications, but also to write and send out press releases. The most notorious example being Le Decret de Mars. What was that? What's the Mars Decree? I mean the radio transmission sent out to news agencies and world governments by the newly created Commune of Revachol on the 7th of March in the year 02. It's a beautiful piece of text, actually. A singer-songwriter I know, Charette, called it a love poem to River Shawl on her political concept album, Bon Bessier dans le Lind. You should read it. Every local library in River Shawl stocks a copy of the decree. I tried to get Mikhail to memorize it. Tried to. Someone was much too interested in worms to be paying any attention. The kid takes a peek at the green and silver worm on the cover of the book, already forgetting about this part of the discussion. How did those tape computers work? Did they work like radio computers? Actually, no one knows. No one even knows what a computer made entirely of tape would look like. But word has it, they were very elegant. Exquisite, alien-looking, turn-of-the-century hardware. Ten years ago, I did a little... freelancing, I guess you could say. I was a special consultant for an exhibition at the Womti Domti Dom Center in Vredefort, Oranje. It raised the same questions, and we had lengthy discussions with Paul Ockerman, who was head curator at the time. This was before the twins Keith and Guy Jews joined the team, trying to... Wait, did he just say Wompty Dompty Dom Center? He did it. He said Wompty Dompty <laughs> Dom Center, like it's the most natural thing in the world. What the hell is a Wompty Dompty Dom Center? And who the hell are Keith and Guy Joost? Okay, the Wompty Dumpty Dom Center, Paul Ackerman, Keith and Guy Juiced, what are you talking about? The Wompty Dumpty Dom Center for Contemporary Art. The exhibition itself drew on Lagerman's notion of memory, and so there were some parallels. That's why the head curator, Paul Ackerman, chose to... Making this up. Cam, is he making this up? <laughs> In fact, I'm not. The Wompty Dumpty Dom Center 
is a place you can visit if you're ever in Vredeport and are ever in the market for an exhibition space slash contemporary art research center. <clears throat> but perhaps I should return to the tape computers. As I was saying, the device itself was very elegant, fragile even. One could write directly on the tape using a special chemical solution. The machine would then analyze the handwriting, perform operations and project output onto a white screen. It was a beautiful, delicate thing. The RCM should get some of those. Even one would be very useful. Though I understand the socio-economic causes of the revolution, it pains me to imagine the revolutionary setting fire to the precious device. But so they did. The Feld playback experiment vanished into the fires of 07. Wait, the Feld playback experiment? Yes, the official name of the prototype. Some sources report it as the Feld playback experience. But those are incorrect. Why did the revolutionaries destroy it? Who knows? Maybe it was an accident, or maybe they didn't want the technology to end up in the wrong hands. Either way, they're all gone now. All three versions of the prototype. Nothing but debris and ashes remain inside that building. Two seagulls circle in the sky. You look up and think, really? Or was there a fourth prototype that remains hidden in the mausoleums below Cold City? What the fuck? I wanted to ask something else. But of course. <laughs> what else? You look like someone who has money. Do you have any money? I do have some money, yes. But that's not what's really important here. I don't want your money. I just wanted to see whether my profiling skills were working. Of course, detective. I wouldn't have assumed anything else. Matter of fact, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but the Vespertine Department of Justice has published a rather interesting paper on the criminal profiling in former socialist states. Have you read it? If not, then you definitely should. If not for tips and tricks, then just for theoretical curiosity. What the fuck? Anyway, that's just a little something that sprang to mind. You were saying? Sure, what's on your mind? But of course. No, thanks to you for having me and little Mikael here to pick your brain. A very interesting conversation indeed. Uh, we got Lompty Dompty Dom Center. It's Wednesday evening and something he heinously exciting is underway. People have gathered beneath the billowing roof in an oddly shaped trophy building, sipping wine and exchanging opinions. 29-year-old Wonder Twins, Guy and Keith Juice, are the stars of the show with their bomber jackets and white sneakers, head curators of this art exhibition. It's the Wompty Dom the Dommiest event of the year and all the cool kids have RSVP'd. Where are you if not there? If you are not there. Okay. Another power box changes and no charges nothing now. It's empty. Fence blocks path. No way on from here. So it leveled up. I'm fucking rolling in the money right now, man. Dang. Fifteen bucks, my name. I think I kind of just want another. Uh, do I want another thing? It's a precarious world to me again. Uh. Oh, right. Critical success and failure threat. Research all red checks fail. That's fucked up. This forgery document thing is a red check. I think Cold Amamaqua attack. Cold Amamadakwa does, uh, what do you call it? New perception bonus. I think I'll just put a skill point in. Well, might as well put it in an interfacing. You see a once bright mural towering above you. The signage has peeled off over the years, but you can still make out Feld Electrical R&D, a slogan used to intertwine with the loops a long time ago. Now, 
Only a shadow of peeled letters remains. It says, Tomorrow is just a whisper away. Looks like tomorrow never came. Bars cover these long, dusty windows. Okay. Bone. The remaining windows rattle from a strong gust of wind. They're covered in a thick layer of grime. They must have been like this for 40 years. Dripping water falls from a high place. All you can see is the shadow of a collapsing staircase. Lieutenant, can you make out what's inside? No. I won't even try. You know, I had a partner once. They called him Eyes because he had to show me things. It's that bad. This partner of his, Eyes, things didn't end well. It saddens him to say his name. Don't even ask. He wouldn't answer. Maybe some other small talk. Can you still shoot, though? Well enough, actually. It's odd how that works. I'm no sharpshooter, but I pass my shooting courses 7 out of 10. He hits the shot when it counts. Okay, let's go talk to the... Zoologist. Here we go. Nice and easy. No way out, little guys. Not out of this gym. There's a cylinder on the ground in which the man is arranging some netting. It looks like some kind of trap. He notices you. Who's there? Oh, the police. Hello, officers. His self-conscious enthusiasm renders his movements ungainly. He looks like your understanding of a scientist. Is that the police? Why are the police here? Fuck you, Gary. Don't worry, Gary. I'll handle it. You must be Morel, the cryptozoologist. To what do I owe the pleasure? Lena sent me. She's been really worried about you and is waiting for you to get back. Hey, of course. Thank you for passing along the message. That damn water lock is broken, and we can't go all the way around the 881. Water lock's been fixed. It was fine when I crossed it. Oh, good. We should really be getting back. Gary could use a hot shower and a warm bed. Did he say we can go back now? Yes, Gary. We can go soon. If you see Lena, tell her I won't be long. Sir, your wife is waiting for you. I just have to do one more round. See if the phasmid has taken the bait. Then we go in. For all his passion, this man is diligent and patient. You could learn things from him. Tell me about this phasmid you're looking for. Hmm. Well, first of all, it's damn difficult to find, which is why we've been knee-deep in the reeds laying traps for it. What makes it so difficult to find? Good question. Being a phasmid of the order Phantasmodea, a ghost insect. It disguises itself as plant matter. In this case, the reeds. Awful lot of reeds around, aren't there? And I suspect it may have also developed other specialized techniques to protect itself from predators, or scientists, in our present case. What sorts of specialized techniques is the phasmid using to hide itself? It's my hypothesis that it has evolved certain electrochemical defenses that allow it to interfere with animal perception, impeding pattern recognition, confusing the visual cortex. But I cannot describe how these defenses work, much less how they evolve, without studying a live specimen. Yes, it makes perfect sense. You're beginning to suspect there's something paranatural about this phasmid. How big is this phasmid? I'm expecting it to be quite giant. One known species of phasmid, called the Megaphasmodea zoensis, is about the size of a grown man's forearm, so, uh... Seems puny, to be honest. Why are you so interested in this stick bug? It doesn't seem to be as colorful as some of the other cryptids I've heard about. Typical rookie assumption. Insects are much more sophisticated creatures than those unversed in zoology give them credit for. Even simply catching a glimpse of the Insulindian phasmid would be the apex of my, of any, cryptozoologist's career. But to study it 
and its defenses. Find out how it stayed hidden so long. Would be glory itself. Well, what have you discovered about it so far? Very little, I'm sorry to say. No one's ever captured a specimen, so all our information is based on first and third hand accounts. No one's ever found one? Not yet. That's what makes it a cryptid. Um, <clears throat> just out of curiosity, if there's no proof of its existence, how do you know it's real? I know it's real. By which I mean, I've heard enough first-hand accounts to believe quite firmly that the Insulindian phasmid is more than mere superstition. What would it be like to grasp and hold onto something you think is next to you, or just behind you? Like a trace of vapor you exhaled one spring morning as a child. This is what he's searching for. A spectre. Lena said there has been a sighting of it here in Martinez. Yes. The most recent sighting was by a couple of teenagers along the coast here. That's what brought us to Martinez specifically. It's the first credible sighting in several decades. Admittedly, it's an unusual location for this species. But with all the sewage runoff upstream, it probably doesn't matter much anymore. Maybe the Insulinian Phasmid has died out? I have to resist the thought. Such an extraordinary creature is doubtlessly highly resilient. After all, it's generally thought to be capable of parthenogenesis. Um. Par parthenogenesis? Yes. The females don't need males to reproduce makes it easier for a species to survive in adverse conditions. That's pretty clever. Yes. The Insulindian phasmid is a very clever insect. That's why it's so damn difficult to catch. But as a scientist, I'll try my best to remain dispassionate. There's nothing dispassionate about the way he talks about the insect. Tell me more about these traps. Well, they may not look impressive. But Lena designed them quite cleverly, so I'm sure they'll do the trick. Oh, Lena designed the traps? Yes. How do the traps work? Simple. Attracted by the locusts, the phasmid crawls down the funnel and, having eaten its fill, can't get back out. At least, that's the intention. The net isn't a perfect solution, but we didn't want to use anything that might damage the specimens delicate exoskeleton. What are you using as bait? Locusts. Nearly all known phasmids are herbivores, of course. But we've hypothesized that the Insulindian phasmid might occasionally prey on other insects. Inside the traps, a number of locusts crawl and tumble over one another in a tiny, chittering swarm. What will you do if these traps don't work? They'll work, I assure you. The predatory hypothesis, using locusts as bait, accounts for the failure of previous efforts by other teams, which use plants. We have given this some thought. The traps do seem to be deftly and thoughtfully constructed. It's clear the cryptozoologist's wife knows what she's doing. Yes. What? Lena seems pretty eager for you to return. And I'm eager to return to her, I assure you. But I can't leave before we finish with these traps. My wife understands that just as well as anyone. Come on, Morel. We've been soaking out here for days. It's time to go back. And leave the traps? Absolutely not. I won't let Lena down. Come on. She wants us back. I'm soaked up to my nuts over here. We'll both catch reed crabs if we don't dry out soon. What? Let Lena down. Sounds like the cryptozoologist's wife shares a special connection to the Phasmid somehow. I didn't know the Phasmid was so important to Lena. Of course it's important to her. She's seen it. A verified sighting, on record. One of only four this century, and it's hers. Really? She sighted the Phasmid? She didn't tell me that. Yes. That's how we first came to know one another, in fact. But that's her story to tell, not mine. <laughs> Needless to say, you must ask her about the mysterious phasmid. Suffice to say, 
It's long been our dream to find proof of the Insulindian phasmid together. <clears throat> I can't abandon course now. Uh, maybe you go back to the Whirling, warm up, come back to check the traps later. No, no, no. The traps need to be monitored on a regular schedule. What would we do if the phasmid were to starve while we were sitting tea at the hostel? He's dead set on this. Hmm. I could go for some trap setting. What if we check the traps for you? We didn't expect you to take such an interest in our work here, officer. Cryptozoology and detective work are very similar. Yes, indeed. Both require a great deal of research, attention to detail, and, above all, persistence. Where are these traps? There are four in total. One is to the south, on this little peninsula. By the boathouse is there. It's very near. Another we set in Land's End, to the northeast. It's behind a small sand dune there, on your way to the old radio tower. After the church, the third is set near the canal, where you crossed by a concrete slab, a big thicket of reeds going up the slope, and among them, you should check at least one of those before returning to this one, since I just said it. This one's more of a technicality, but still, better safe and stupid than sorry. That seems like a lot. Do we really have time for this extracurricular venture? The pursuit of knowledge is its own justification. Is it? If you think it's important, you have been right before. What do I do if there's a phasmid in one of the traps? Bring it to me at once. Just make sure the trap is closed tight. What if I encounter the phasmid in the wild? That's highly unlikely, officer. But in the event you do, I'll spray you with a pheromone mixture I developed. It's made of musk and research chemicals. The pheromone should attract the insect to you, or at least prevent it from bolting at the side of you. It's quite potent. Will last you about a week. Lay it on me. Thick. This is the smell of dying reeds. Of longing crumbling into the water. Jesus. I hope you're not buying this. It dispenses it without letting you touch the canister, so it would be precious like holy water. It is precious. A single dose cost me 50 real to develop. Not that I expect you to understand self-financing one's own research. I'm ready. Let's get to it. Right. Which means you two can pack up and go back to the whirling. Whatever he thinks about this detour, it's clear that these men are exhausted and in need of assistance. Finally! Someone's talking sense. Thank you for your help. Gary and I will start breaking down camp. If you have any more questions, now's the time to ask. We'll be gone once you get to it. If it's more cryptid-related business you want to discuss, you'll have time for that later, too. But what if the information is vital on the hunt? How did you become a cryptozoologist? I've just always liked animals and puzzles. Searching for cryptids is a bit of both. He seems reluctant to talk about himself, but he'll open up. If you prod a little. So you're living your childhood dream out here. It's not child's play. Just because I have to traipse through the mud every so often. Why not be a zoologist? Real animals are puzzling too. Real? I know you think one is a respectable profession, while the other is superstition. Everyone does. Cryptozoology does seem like a lot. No, I don't. It's a profession just like any other. Indeed. My methods do not differ from other scientists. I simply draw upon a wider variety of evidence. And I have more hope that something truly surprising might happen. Your nerve endings tell you there is no such thing as a positive surprise. Has anything truly surprising ever happened to you? No. As I said, I have yet to catch a cryptid. Although I have come close. Close enough to keep trying. As of evidence to you use. Everything from forgotten regional law to newspaper accounts, like the one that brought us here, to look for the phasmid. I keep a very open mind. So you've never discovered a cryptid? No. Very few cryptids are ever discovered, and not for a lack of trying. To stay hidden is a cryptid's primary quality. It's even in the name. 
cryptid. Oh. How many cryptids have been found? Of the list of cryptids kept by the Cryptozoological Society of Shemni, which is 4,082 items long, about 2,000 have been confirmed as hoaxes. Two are categorized as confirmed discoveries. The rest are in differing stages of discovery, refutation, and data collection. Only two have proven to be real? Yes. The Chateau Quan Forest Pygmy, who turned out to be an extinct species of primate, and a cave salamander from Hugo Grad, who is, honestly, quite unremarkable. It's in a zoo somewhere. We cryptozoologists are brutally honest with ourselves, more so even than the public. With cryptids, most cryptids are hoaxes or they are never found. That does not mean we should stop searching. Then the Insulinian Phasmid will be the third. Indeed. If our expedition is successful, every paper in the world will report on it. From Revachol to Dushan too. It will be a zoological miracle. The hair on your arms stand up. Electricity. Sounds like reeds hissing. Thanks for explaining that. Now, honest, now about something else. Yes? Ask him about cryptids later. Tiny cages carefully constructed. We you saw your logs smell of ignition fluid, they still won't light up. Or still they won't light up. These heavily these heavy military blockades are riddled with bullet holes crumbling. Hey Gary, you fucking asshole, what's up? Hello, I'm Gary. Very generous of you to help us out, officer. Yellow man. I mean, officer. The lieutenant raises his eyebrows slightly and takes out his notebook. Yellow man. That sounds awfully familiar. Something to keep in mind for later. I'm just waiting for my friend Morel to finish up with his insect traps so we can return to civilization. Not a lover of the great outdoors? I like nature, just not this bloody coast. It's mostly drunks and degenerates that come here. Nobody's perfect. I'm sure you've been tempted to drink. Oh, I've been tempted. But someone has to stay strong for Revacol. He pronounces Revacol with a hard K, unlike other people. You said Revacol? I like to pronounce it the hard way. The old way. The Vespertine way. He winks at you, trying to relay some hidden message. Inviting you to mispronounce it too, perhaps. <laughs> it's odd. It's a secret rite. A very fringe nationalist handshake, probably. You know anything about the man hanging behind the whirling rags? Oh! So that's what the RCM in Martinez is about. Great. Great to hear someone's finally taking care of that. So you do know something about it? No, no. Nothing. He was some kind of mercenary. But everyone here knows that. I'm just glad to hear you're looking into it. That's all. He's not feeling very comfy in his clothes, is he? Strange. Is your mug? My mug? Why would you think that? You look like the kind of guy who might have a collection of mugs like this. Home. In his colonial mug collection. How do you mean? Forgive me, officer, but we've only just met. He's trying not to look afraid. Because that would be incriminating. Yet, he is. You're acting kind of suspicious. Did I mention the mug was found at the scene of a lynching? Okay. Okay, I admit it. I threw the mug away in the trash container behind the hostel. I know I shouldn't have, and I am very sorry, officer. You're not going to find me, are you? I am. Okay, I deserve that. Fuck you. And I won't do it again. You have my word. I don't know what got into me. Stuffing my garbage in another man's property, it's... I've been having trouble at work lately. It, the Koikos are price dumping us out of competition. That's fucking problem. What did you do, Gary? Nothing. Nothing. Just answering some questions. Helping out the law. Here we go. Start pumping that sweet info. How did you get into the trash container? 
I know a guy who works with the trash collection services, CS Municipal. He gave me a master key for the trash containers of Martinez. Why would you need to get into everyone's trash? So I can use the Whirling's trash compactor to store my own stuff. Garbage disposal is expensive as hell. The damn Bohemians run it like a mob. I'm sorry, okay? I thought I could cut costs. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have disgraced myself. Disgraced? No need for the histrionic, sir. It was, after all, just a trash container. He studies his reaction. Gary doesn't answer. Gary, did you put the victims of a murder victim, the man who was hanged behind the whirling and rags, into that trash container? Officer, please. Let me explain. It's not like that. Do. I was only cleaning up. I live right across the yard from where he was hanged, and I saw him stripped naked. All the clothes lying around in the yard, smelling. People are animals, you know? Okay, then what happened? Then I came out to clean up the rags, because no one else would. I put them into the Whirling's trash, along with a broken mug, admittedly. Okay. I was coming to throw the mug away, and, well, I threw the mug there and the clothes too. Right. It was just civic duty. Exactly. That's exactly what it was. Civic duty. As he shifts uncomfortably, a series of clicks, like the clinking of glass beads, against one another as they roll across a hardwood floor. You've heard this sound before. But where? What's that strange sound? What sound? Don't mess with me. I, I think I know what you, I think you know what I'm talking about. I haven't the slightest. There's lots of weird stuff out here in the reeds, though. Insects, trash. Could be the wind shifting some garbage nearby. Every day, the wind shifts the reeds and whatever was left in them. Tambourines and condom wrappers, plastic and glass bottles, the smell of decay. You wouldn't know anything about the victim's missing armor, would you? Armor? No. I, I mean, yes. Of course. I know he was wearing armor, but I don't know anything about it. There's something going on here. You should observe it more closely after this topic is concluded. Let's move on for now. I hope I can help your investigation in my small way. Don't be so relieved yet, Gary. This bad cop may have been in your apartment admiring your mug collection. Perhaps a little intimidation? Are you a cryptozoologist? No, no. I help Morel with research sometimes, and I've learned some things along the way. But I don't usually go in for picnics like this on my own. You were surprised to see my colleague, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. Not many Seolites here, or anywhere, other than Seol. I meant no offense, truly. Do you remember how, when we met Measurehead and I said the next racist will be a really good one? <laughs> yes. Well, this is that racist. <laughs> <laughs> are you Gary? Are you a racist? Hey, man. All I meant was there are not many Seolites around here. I'm just stating a fact. You have a problem with Seolites? No. No problem at all. So, Gary, you live nearby in an apartment in Martinez? Sure do, officer. His eyes narrow slightly. He's wondering where this is going. You found your door open lately? In my home. Yes. When I was going to... How did you know? Nothing, just wanted to ask if your door's been unlocked lately. Now I have. Is this about the union? Did the big man open the door? Don't worry, I didn't go in. So you work for Everard Claire? Officer, please tell him we're good. No, no, tell him I'll make it up to him. What have I done? He'll send the muscle after me. As he lowers his tone, he hunches his back. Our discussion on this topic is over, Gary. Of course, of course. I won't <laughs> Fuck do this it guy. again. If there's anything I can do to assist you, or the union, just ask, okay? I'll try to help if I can. This scared him proper. He's positively melting from fear. 
has to prop himself up with a lot of anger to keep it together. The way the vein has turned, he cannot be unturned. He clearly liked his squirming. He may even have changed his mind about the whole door opening operation. That shirt looks very uncomfortable on him. Look at the buttons, barely keeping that thing together, as if something is ready to rip out from underneath. Something worn underneath it? I'm not gonna fuck you, Gary. You don't get to get memed. Yes, like a piece of ceramic armor, for example. One that makes a clicking sound when the plates meet each other, resembling pearls or marbles, stolen from the corpse in the yard near where he lives. Let's see, you're a connoisseur of high quality combat gear. I knew you'd figure it out, officer. I'm sorry I didn't tell you at once. I was. I was ashamed of what I did, and I didn't want you to know. This shame is surprisingly sincere. Gary, what's going on? Later, morale. I've got apologizing to do. No, you've got explaining to do. Get that armor, now. He sighs again, hangs his head, and unbuttons his shirt fully. A cuirass that matches the dead man's boots comes into view. Soon it is in your hands, smelling of his sweat. But so, so light to hold, like a bag of cotton. Why did you really put those clothes in the trash? Everyone was picking those pieces off him and I was watching them do it. And they'd scattered his clothes all over the yard. Everything was smelling. So I went there to take out the trash and started cleaning up. All those rags on the ground, him swinging up there and I had a lapse of honor sir I thought he's a foreigner they all say he wasn't from here only the caress was left so I stripped it off him it was early in the morning no one saw me I took it with me it was a mistake had I known it'd give you guys trouble I I wouldn't have fuck it's okay it was a loose end and you are tiny tap now I'm so fucking sorry I called you yellow man. Sealite officers commanded the suzerain's navy. Most of them sided with the king when... It's difficult to say what the lieutenant thinks of this historic apology. <laughs> His face does not belie emotions. Such a shithead. Why did you lie to me, Gary? Because I was weak. I should have told you the moment I saw you. But... The hell, Gary? You in trouble? I'll explain later. Do you know who killed the hangman? I always thought it was the Union, but I sure as hell won't go around saying that anymore. You have my word. I don't know, and I won't be running my mouth on this subject anymore. Are we done here, Gary? Yes, absolutely. I will never do anything like this again. I, I won't mess with Mr. Claire either. You have my word. Thank you for your cooperation. Oh yeah. Thicker skin, borrowed confidence, mania of invulnerability. This vitreous enamel cuirass fits snugly and, and redistributes kinetic energy across its countless white plates. Amazingly, it fits under your coat. Also makes pretty porcelain sounds when shaken. Nice, nice. Take the traps. For that later. Might as well put another potent point inter inter into interfacing. Cool, cool. No boat in the bow house today. Or sunglasses. Dazzling reflexes. The mirror lies. Is your own stardom too dazzling for your eyes? Can't bear to look at your own mirror or let, look at your own fabulous reflection in the mirror. And these classic oversized sunglasses are for you. Um, I don't think sub warfare really matters right now. Boathouse is shoddily constructed. A strong breeze might blow it over.
Ancient paint is peeling off the roof of this shaded bench covered in rust. Sign says, Entre in Interdit. An old ticket taker booth, no longer in operation. People will be money to park here? No one would pay now. The boards crack dangerously as you run. Be careful here. Door is not only barred shut, it is inaccessible. Found people, people. A scattering of bullet holes is spread across the cracked wall, reaching from one corner to the other. Look, Kim, even more bullet holes. Something's definitely gone down here. Hmm. Correct. The density of the bullet holes is unusual. Even in a general, average bullet hole frequency in Martinez's sense. Grim affairs. Meaning, this is a lot of bullet holes. Looks like fully automatic rifle fire. Something you don't see these days. Why not? The manufacturing and sale of automatic rifles was curtailed after the revolution. The destructive power of such tools proved to be too much. We do need to retain some humanity in this world. My visual calculus is zero. Now it's one. What is it now? 17%. Unable to oh. piece together the big picture just now. There's a hole in the hypothesis. Fine, okay. The scattering of bullet holes looks like... Small wire framing inside this futuristic looking fallen peepo hat gives it the aerodynamic shape of Swoop Skier's... Swoop Skier's... Helmet. Uh, but none of its protective qualities. Covers the wearer's ears and eyebrows to bring down the drag coefficient. Ultimate peak focus, eyes on the road. Cool. All right. Church. Let me check this out. There's a trap in the reeds at your feet. Looks like the same one you saw Morel set before. Same mesh, same wiring. Behind you, the ruins of a residential building rise over the reeds, shielding them from the wind. The reeds rustle confidently. When this district was booming, the reeds were kept at bay. Nothing obscured the freshly painted facades. Nowhere for drunks and adventurous teenagers to hide. Now only the wind blows. Locusts are crawling around in the trap, confused but uneaten. You see no carnivorous reed phasmid gorging on them. Big surprise. Anyway, one down, three to go. Damn, I was hoping it would be in the first one. No, you weren't. Be a buzzkill, Kim. Pick that one last. Dead phone. A smashed receiver like someone hung up too hard. Someone must have worked hard to smash the plastic dome. You can imagine why. Calls become terrible sometimes. Buzz, hum, the electricity flows through the wires with audible power. Oh my god, serial experiments and lame reference? Someone has left an unidentifiable article of clothing on this railing. It smells really bad. The cloth, if you can still call it that, makes a soft crunching sound as you thrust your finger into it. Ew. 
It's streaked with dried seagull shit and tangled with pieces of seaweed. A dangling arm suggests that there might be a jacket beneath the crust of filth. Please tell me you're not taking that with you. Why not? It's a guano encrusted jacket, and you're already carrying around enough as it is. He. This filthy rag has been at the mercy of the elements for quite some time. It's streaked with seagulls, shit, and abnormally stiff from god knows what natural processes. You can't even tell what brand it is. As you hold it in your hands, it makes an uncomfortable crunching sound. Man, how did this jacket get so disgusting? It's a sordid, filthy tale. Not for the weak. Are you sure you can stomach it? Some secrets are better left uncovered. Don't even try. Seriously. Think about it. It occurs to you that you're not even holding the jacket itself, but rather the thick crust of jetsam and seagull shit that ensconces it. It smells like a dead sea creature, tangled in grey strands of seaweed. It must have spent quite some time in the water before the tide deposited it ashore. Okay, but what's the crust made of? Somehow, it was carried or dragged to the boardwalk. If not by human hands, then perhaps the feral dogs that prowl the beaches at night. Okay, that's pretty disgusting. I've had enough. Why? Why did you think about it? Look at your hands. They're covered in muck. Ew, ew, ew. Now you're just flicking that shit everywhere. This is a disaster. You'll never get the smell out. Oh. Well. Happens. Makeshift roof. Vagrants have tried to make the boardwalk habitable. Postcard Kuron 33. This one has hell written on its back. It could not be further from the truth. It's the boom years, and Kuron is the nicest district in Revachol West. It's enjoying a sun-drenched day. Tall and handsome buildings rise from the riverside. Steel, iron, and yellow limestone with cloud shadows sliding on the facades. Nice. Coin-operated weighing machine has been used for a decade. Mega Beano's prescription lenses. Vagrants have recently painted the tarp red. Water drips. Over your Urbino, nausea inducing hell glasses. Who's the idiotic idea where square and beige plastic frames anyway? Beige is a color that does not look good on anyone. Not to mention that seeing the world through these exceedingly thick lenses feels almost nauseating. Oh boy, here it comes. Awful and familiar. Hold on, that is awful. It doesn't help. You can still smell it. What is it? Don't you recognize it? That idiot's pungency, that faintly cloying sweetness. Only death smells like that. Something cold wakes in the pit of your stomach. Fear. Heads up, Lieutenant. Something's not right here. The Lieutenant has already brought a handkerchief to his nose. on the boardwalk, his limbs bent and neck turned at an unnatural angle. Right mm -hmm. next to him is an empty bottle of spirits. In his cramped hand, a chewing gum wrapper. Half of his body has slipped between the cracked boardwalk, starting with the right leg. The fall has left him broken, contorted like a sad puppet. The smell is not as bad as a two-week-old corpse, but it's definitely heading there. Hold on. Lividity is faintly pronounced. Whoever this is, has been dead for two days. No longer. We need to investigate. Calm now. Carefully. Just another day. Just another dead body. Breathe. He's wearing 
mud caked boots, beige trousers, and an old brown leather jacket with a bright blue lining. There are traces of kebab sauce on his chest. The leather jacket suits him well. It must be custom made. Mm. You find some sunflower seeds and a rain-soaked library card folded into two. His jacket feels sodden and heavy under your hand. Good. We should take a look at that library card after this is done. The man has fallen through a crack in the boardwalk and hit his head against the metal bench. Coagulated blood covers his black hair. One of his feet is still dangling through the hole. You have to be quite inebriated to fall that bad. Well over a litre of pure ethanol. Three bottles of wine or one and a half of spirits. His expression is dull like the sea behind him. Drops of water shining on his moustache. His eyes, empty and wide, look frightening in their frozen gaze. He was confused when he died. Confused and alone, most likely. Overcome with the awful surprise of it all. He was just about to head home. The first step back home proved to be his last. There's some dried blood on the metal bench, right where the corpse's head rests. The floorboards are rotten and slippery wet around the hole. An empty bottle lies nearby. A chewing gum wrapper is clutched in his fist. A dried chunk of blood covers the hair at the back of his head. An open wound. It's sticky and cold to your touch. This is where he came out of himself, drop by drop, when he was unconscious. It took three, maybe four minutes. I don't see any other major wounds, do you? Hard to say. No, just this one, like we said. Seems like the head wound was fatal. It's exactly the shape of the bench. They screech under your feet ominously. It's hard to say whether the dead man's weight was the cause of the boardwalk to break. It definitely looks fragile. You see waves churning below. Something cracks beneath your feet. A 0.75 litre Tallulah vodka with its cap missing. There's hardly anything left inside. It's mid-market spirits with a slight touch of menthol. The man meant to enjoy himself. Have a good time. Tear all around us. I'd prefer if you didn't collect them this time. It's not proper. Yeah. True. It feels disrespectful. Grabowski spearmint chewing gum. Green leaves on the cover. The man's mouth is half agape from the terror of the fall. The blackness of death. Stench. You think you see white chewing gum too? He ate the whole pack, right? It's to cover the smell of alcohol before going home. The worst thing is, I've seen it before. Almost the same scenario, even the chewing gum. It's always the same. In a ditch off a road below the 881, he thinks, a young father. Then he shakes his head to make the memory stop. The entire boardwalk creaks in the wind as you take a step back. Who is this man? Looks like one of the locals. He'd have to know this spot to come here. You don't just walk over here. But that's just a lazy assumption. What do you think? We know who this is. It's the working class woman's missing husband. Dead on the boardwalk. The woman you met at the book stand? Why do you think it's her husband? The leather jacket matches her description perfectly. The bright blue lining? Well, he's definitely someone's husband. What do you think happened here? Death by misadventure. He slipped and fell through the boardwalk. A truly unfortunate accident. If it wouldn't have been for that bench, he'd be alive. Be related to the lynching? No, I don't see anything that points in that direction. For now, let's treat this case as a simple, albeit sad, accident, and relate it to the murder case. Yes, but what if there's a killer on the loose? Two suspicious deaths in such a short time frame. You're right. Connecting it with the lynching is a stretch. Without any further evidence, yes. Think he was drunk? Oh, yes. What about alcohol poisoning and liver failure? Some symptoms of acute alcohol poisoning could have definitely played a role here. Severe confusion, respiratory depression, and predictable behavior. But I think that death arrived through head trauma, not liver failure. 
What about the kebab? What about it? The deceased ate some kebab. It's probably from a nearby place, maybe in the parks. Someone should be held responsible for this broken boardwalk. It's dangerous. They'll seal this place off after the news reaches the coalition officials. I doubt that they have enough resources to actually repair the boardwalk. Not that sealing it off would keep anyone away. All it does is keep the city council's hands clean. Right. It does seem to be a pretty straightforward misadventure. Although there's still a question of identifying the body. What should we do with them? From where I stand, I can see two options. We either take the case and follow the leads to identify the body on our own, or we report back to the station and leave this for our colleagues to handle. Hold on, what about field autopsy? A field autopsy isn't necessary if the cause of death doesn't appear to be criminal, and this looks like a simple accident to me. I'd say we should just write down head trauma in the autopsy report and leave it at that. It would save us at least two hours of unnecessary work. Yes, but isn't that kind of sloppy? Maybe, but we don't really have much time or resources to spare. The guys at processing will take care of the rest. We found them, we should finish this. Alright, we should first examine the library card you found. Then we can call the station from my kinema. Let them know we are taking the case. Cup of the Apocalypse. It's not fire. It's not ash. There will, most certainly be, a sea of corpses leading up to the event. But it won't be war or pestilence that causes it. Oh no, the event will belong to a genre of cataclysm. No man has dared to suspect would ever come to pass. You can only sense the shape of it, like a cavity, a pit opening up in your stomach, a throat into which the world will vanish. The streets, the grass, the stars, all will be rolled back by whom by what and how you don't know all you know is you're not joking around oh well, you know the learning cap for the two skills i use the most i recard found from a pocket of the dead man on the Martinez boardwalk. It's sli still slightly damp to the touch. The cover bears the stamp of Jamrock Public Library. The library card is folded into two and still slightly wet to the touch. The front side reads, Central Jamrock Public Library card, issued to Billy Mejean, expires July 53. Whoever owns this card is an avid reader. You find a list of books written in blue pencil. Radio Thriller. Stand a little less between me and the sun. The last one in the list is The Glinton Curve by M. Theobald. A library stamp indicates that the book has been returned. Most of these titles seem to be in the sci-fi genre. Some thrillers too. If lost, please return the card to the library. Dial 005-02-55212. Or visit us at Moreau Street, 78, Jamrock. Business hours, 900 to 1800. Good. We should give them a call from my kinema. See if we can learn anything about Billy Mejean. Alright. There's some tear. An empty cigarette package and a crumpled kebab wrapper in the trash bin. Two empty bottles of Tallulah vodka and a can of black potent porter is all you find. No, there's more in there. Livis strawberry liquor, plus some pills in the bottles too. Better not pick them up. They seem unhygienic. A tragedy. He shakes his head with genuine sadness. Whoever tossed it here was a heavy smoker. The brand name reads Red Astra. You see traces of mayonnaise and ketchup on it, as well as a tomato wedge. The wrapper reads Shish Kebab Revachol. It's hard to concentrate in the smell. The sea air brings some relief. Yes? Yeah, man. 
Moonshine probably smells like tasty fermentation. I want to do this when Kim isn't here. Feel the shadow of a very large building fall on you. Sign reads St. Brune, 1147. Dusty pews in the shadows, many seem to be missing. An altar shrouded in dark or something like that, it's too dark to tell. Some more coins. Heavy wooden doors, more than twice your height, stand shut in front of you. The rectangular sea-worn ornamentation appears in stark contrast to the padlock, carelessly drilled into the wood. Nothing happens, only the sound of the padlock rattling against the door. I don't think that's going to work. High above, the wind wraps the church in its rush cold and wet from the ocean bay. It parts around the massive keel-shaped roof, like a test tunnel washing both sides, the way it has done for 340 years. The wind keeps its distance. So should you. What is this feeling? There is a hole in my heart. Oh, shit. The lieutenant looks at the padlock. He didn't hear you asking. You were quiet enough. The carving on the door is block-like and angular, like the church itself. Two large beams shoot downwards, sinking into the wood before they reach the threshold. The surface is smooth from the wind, but moist to the touch. This cheap-looking padlock is sturdily built. It shackles together a hasp and a staple screwed into the wooden door. The lock is adorned with a yellow sticker. It'll be easier to break the staple than the lock. Also, that sticker is interesting, somehow. You see a yellow circle with two X's and a big curve below them that looks like a mouth. You're pretty sure you haven't seen it before, but what the symbol depicts is clear enough. A smiling dead guy. The curve makes it smile and the X's make it dead. Have you seen the symbol before? He takes off his glasses and uses a blue handkerchief to thoroughly wipe them clean before inspecting the sticker. Then he looks up, pauses, and replies. No. What does it look like to you? Looks like a dead man smiling. Suggests junior delinquency. Okay, what is junior delinquency? For Revachol ZOC, the moral intern defines junior delinquents as minors between the ages of 10 and 16 who have committed an act in violation of the law. These acts aren't called crimes as they would be for adults. Crimes committed by minors are called delinquent acts. This was part of your officer's exams. What is suggestive of junior delinquency here? I haven't seen that sticker before, and I'm not a youth. Inspect the staple. The padlock passes through a staple that's been hastily attached to the wood. Closer inspection reveals that one of the screws is not a screw at all, but a nail. The work has been done recently and is unprofessional, to say the least. There's nothing like the sound of a sticker unpeeling. Now it's stuck to your thumb. Looks like today was a gold star day. Hell yeah. If you really think we should get in there, we need to find some other way. We start with that kick drum coming from the ice? Yes, the pulsing bass. An indication of junior delinquency. It's the ledger you found in the trash. A cabbage of papers hanging from the- Wait, what is it to open it? It's the ledger you found in the, the trash. Logic. A cabbage of papers hanging from the board. With Maybe I'll put a point in the logic to read that shit later. Let's 
barrel has been recently discarded. It still smells of fuel oil. Chain trails off into the ocean to, to who knows where. These rusty gears used to turn the whole machine. An old door, worn by elements, guards the depot. The wind has blown a sand dune in front of it. The door hasn't been opened in a long while. You see a handle. What is this thing anyway? It's military. A service depot of some sort. Used to service what? The washerwoman mentioned a depot at the coast. She said it was for moving ammo and cargo across the bay. This might be it. Well, it's a 20, so... Not even gonna bother with that. What polo shirt? What's polo anyway? No, really, what the hell is polo? The shirt looks worn and smells a bit. You can't help but wonder who would leave it stuffed in a tear container. What kind of man would ever would even wear a polo shirt? This might be one of life's mysteries that will never be solved. I agree. I don't think polo shirts look good at all. A familiar apparatus lies among the reeds. Another one of Morel's traps. Weighed down by stones to keep it in place. The reeds sway in the coastal breeze. They seem to be waiting for something. The wind picks up here, near the cape's end, surrounding the narrow strip of land from three cardinal directions. It's cold for this time of year. This trap is also full of panicked locusts. No sign of any cryptozoological beast inside. Another empty trap. Let's keep going. The next one is the lucky one. Um... How are you enjoying the cardio, Lieutenant? I'm quite enjoying it myself. Always up for a good job. Otherwise, would I still be on this case with you? Love, Kim. Cigarette butts cleaned away under a rock. Ran to Mutsubi. Someone's made a campfire here not long ago. Rusted broken control box for the radio relay tower. This ladder is too rusty to climb. The sea air has eaten away at it. Tiny inlets there, off in the far distance, where the posts trail toward. An island. Springtime cold, allergies. This light springtime scarf smells like men's cologne mixed with cheap laundry detergent. Someone must have left it behind, probably from a date. Wear it if you want to delude yourself that spring has arrived. Well. But I like the horrific necktie. It talks to me. It's funny. Take a mental note. Timu tree seems important somehow. Alright, let's go talk to the kids. Before you, a drawbridge can only be lowered from the other side. back here. Must have taken a lot of patience to do this. A shaggy looking girl in her late teens or early twenties kneels on the ice with an electronic contraption in her hand. Hearing you approach, she looks up. Oh, hello there. It's cold out here, but she's not wearing a hat. She must be freezing. Everyone knows drugs make you invulnerable to cold. 
You bet this one likes to party. Dear child, it's freezing. Where's your hat? Huh? I said you should have a hat on. So should you. You don't have to do anything. I should, and I do. Oh, I didn't notice that. It's nice. You should wear one too if you plan on staying outside in this weather. Yeah, well... Look, man, fuck the hat. Your pulse rises. <laughs> I mean, I gotta do it. Lots of feeling. Feel it up. Way up. <laughs> Why is it 15, man? Like, come on. Like, what even is this? <laughs> oh my god. Fuck the hat? Is that what you just said to me? I can't believe you told me to fuck the hat. You're saying it really loud, but it's not coming out right. <laughs> Maybe add more indignation. So I should just, just, just take this hat I'm wearing and fuck it, right? Engage in sexual intercourse with a hat right here in front of you because you told me so on the sea ice? More. Right here on the sea ice? More. <laughs> Give you a little... <laughs> Ice cup hat fuck show. I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. The lieutenant is watching the scene <laughs> unfold before his eyes, unsure how to react. Is that how you see me? The girl looks down, slowly curling into a ball. That's it. You've earned it. Start crying. Life's hard. Anyway, I can't believe you use obscenities like that from a police officer, and you should. You should... No, I'm just gonna start crying. The young woman has kept her eyes trained on her wires, waiting for the sorry spectacle to end. But it's gone awful quiet up there. Then, the sound of sobbing. Looking up, she sees a grown man on the wrong side of 40, his face bloated from alcohol and God knows what else. Not so quietly crying. This isn't really about the hat, is it? No. You know, you're not the only one with issues. I self-medicate. Shit. Life's a horror, you know? Crying helps, though. Get it out your system. And then maybe we can talk. Okay? I'll be here. <clears throat> Do you want to talk about what just happened? It's probably a good idea. Normally, I'm opposed to discussing one's feelings, especially on duty. But I think this is an exceptional case. So, what do you think happened? Crygasm. <laughs> uh, what? It's when you totally break down and it feels a little, a little better afterwards. I don't know where I got the expression from. I may have just invented it. In the future, could you please refrain from emoting too much on duty? The quasi-legal status of the RCM means we need to project strength twice as consistently as any other police force in the world. Okay, I'll control my emotions. Good. Controlling your emotions sounds good. Glad to hear it was minor. Can you go on? Absolutely. Superstars always get up and try. Then, let's go. Nice. <laughs> so, like... Seriously, what's eating you, man? There is a hint of pity in her eyes. Her hair is dyed blonde, with dark roots showing, and she wears thick black eyeliner. Most men wouldn't call her pretty. There is a manliness to her, a coarseness. Yeah, can we talk for a minute? I was wondering when you would come around. What's up? I guess there is something that's been making my life hell. What is it? I think it's the plight of the working class. <laughs> oh, really? The golem of capital runs rampant, smashing creator and slave alike. I fear the process is irreversible. So the thing that's got you crying in front of strangers is social justice? I haven't seen much of this world, but from what I've seen, social justice is an adolescent term. Sounds almost liberal. What's got me shaken up is the people's struggle, and it's got me shaken up bad. Yeah, man. They're pretty bad. Makes me sick thinking about how, uh, thinking about the thousands, millions, billions 
How many people are there actually? Um. How many people are there in the world? 3.6 billion, not counting those in cells. Really? That many? Reduces me to tears thinking of the 3.6 billion and God knows how many more in this in that sale place, crushed under the tyranny of the market. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Are you sure you're not just hung up on some chick though? That you mention it, I found these letters I'd thrown in the trash. They might have something to do with it. Okay. Why'd you think that? Um, first they had just the faintest scent of chewing gum on gun on. Bleh. Ain't a scent of chewing gum on them. I could still smell it under the shit. Wow, man. That's pretty symbolic. Don't you think? Yes, I found that to be very symbolic, too. Okay. What else? They were written in a woman's hand, and oh boy did reading them make me not feel good. There you have it, then. Chick trouble. Not political, after all. Who was she? Don't remember. Really? You seem to be pretty upset about this chica. Are you sure you don't remember anything about her? I remember her scent and that's all. Wow, man. That's some pretty strange shit. Are you sure the letters were for you? Yeah, I'm sure. Why would I have reacted so strongly otherwise? How come you don't remember, though? Is it like some selective memory thing? Wait, what do you mean by selective memory? Man. When I get hurt, I just want to forget that shit, you know? That kind of selective memory. I think it's more about me getting so unbelievably drunk I completely erased all memory of this world. Yeah, or it might be that. This one time I did so much booze that I forgot too. Or it might just be some psych bullshit, you know? Königstein wank. What is this Königstein wank? You know, the psych thing they've got going on there. Rich people like it. People in Königstein are mostly rich. Thanks for the bullshit psych thing, then. You're welcome. Might be for the best to keep that shit forgotten, though. Just my opinion. If it itches, don't scratch. Fair? Yes, but it itches really, really bad. What's your name? A cell. And your surname? Why? I'm from the police. It's for the paperwork. Okay. It's Berger. What's that device you have there? This is a portable recording device. It's for field recording. Low quality, but still. And the wires? Actually, just one wire. I picked on it till the braiding came loose. The wire leads to a contact microphone. What's a contact microphone? A contact mic records sounds from inside things, like this ice. Your mangled brain would like you to know there is a boxer called Contact Mike. Yeah? Any news on my wife's name? How about my mother? No. Well, shit. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Encyclopedia. Can always count on you to let me down. Does this have anything to do with Contact Mike? Uh, yeah, I record stuff with it. No, I mean the boxer Contact Mike. Ah, uh, no. This is a Contact Microphone. It's for recording inside solid objects. Contact Mike just beats people up. That's not fair. And an understatement. You know, Contact Mike doesn't just beat people up. Contact Mike is a role model. Um... Yes, you heard right. You should try to be more like Contact Mike, a successful athlete and an inspirational figure who has overcome social, physical, and mental obstacles. On second thought, screw contact Mike. He's not a champion. You are. Look at you here in front of the saggy tent, picking your nose to drug addict music. The world of sports is in awe of your faith and dedication. Man, you are one weird cop. I'd say I'm just about normal. Now about that Mike. Not Mike. Mike. You do understand it all just sounds like Mike to me, right? How does <laughs> the thing work? The Mike? I don't exactly know. Somehow it doesn't pick up vibrations from the air. The book said it only picks up structure born sound, if you like techno babble. Where did you get the mic from? Same place I got the recorder from, the Palisium. What's the Palisium? Oh man. You haven't been to the Palisium? It's the coolest place in this whole drug addled shithole. It's a music club and a synthesizer workshop 
on Boogie Street in Jamrock. Musicians live there, like real musicians. I once saw Arno Van Eyck. Thinking about it really cheers her up. It's a long way from here, though. Sounds interesting. Who is this Arno guy? Oh, yeah. What was Did that about homosexuals? What? Or really be a Palisium going kind of person. I get down. I don't know what that means. I grind. I don't know what that means either. Um, nor do I, but I have concrete evidence that I rock, in the form of a wrecked tape player and a completely trashed hostel room. That's cool. You're right, time has deserted me. Sucks, man. I'm gonna fucking die. Is there something else? About the contact mic, perhaps? Actually, I had some non-mic questions for you. Okay. What are you doing out here in the cold? Recording, I guess. And what is it you're recording, exactly? I think I'm recording cracks in the ice. But there's no way to tell. Not without headphones. I think I just recorded your footsteps too. Not sure how that will sound. Wait, what happened to the headphones? My boyfriend sold them. What for? I don't know, man. Things. Just stuff you need for life. Everything checks out, sire. And what are these foot recordings for? The cracks, the footsteps? The musicians in the Palisium used them for making music. They looped the stuff, cutting the tapes together. They make music out of cracks in the ice and keys jangling. Crazy sounds like that. It's hard to explain. Anyway, I thought I'd make some too. It's supposed to be, like, a music place anyway. I don't really know what I'm doing. They use synthesizers too. I don't have a synthesizer. She looks at the recording device. The thing she thought would fill her hours with joy and escape. It's turning out to be an empty fantasy. She feels childish. Very useless all of a sudden. Take this, you're cold. No man, fuck that, I'm cool. I'm sorry I said that. I'm sorry about the fuck. It's okay. Now this is where a hat would come in handy. Yeah, maybe you were right about the hat. Here, you need this more than I do. Thanks. I lost Dick Mullen's hat. No, I lost Dick Mullen's hat. Annette gave it to me. You said it's supposed to be a music place. What is... what is? That? The boys think it could be a place, like the Palisium or something. Stupid. It's really not gonna be a Palisium, that's for sure. Boys? Yeah. Andre and the guys, they're inside, in the tent. I had some other questions. Go ahead. Um, tell me more about this music place you've been planning in the church. It's supposed to become, like, a club for anodic dance music, like that new style of synthesizer stuff they play at the Palisium. Except that, yeah. The floorboards are twisting, and the shooting beams are slowly cracking, like bones, far east of the Golden Delta, beyond the industrial port. There is a black patch of unlit coast with the smallest creatures on the ice. There will never be a club for anodic music here. Not in a million years. What is anodic dance music? You know, anodic, cathodic, music that's made with electronic instruments. Electronic instruments, like what? Synthesizers and tape consoles. Microcomputers too. Anything that uses electricity, but isn't guitars. Also found sounds, stuff like that. You see clear, beautiful, Violent flashes of light. Light cutting through a smoke-filled darkness. That is what the future will look like. If it ever comes. You want to turn the church into a club? I know. It's not my idea. Andre and the boys found the place. It was supposed to be deserted, but now they can't even take it. Hey, don't get me wrong, but you're cops, right? Yes, why do you ask? Okay, well... Maybe you could talk to Andre and the guys. Because there are some strange things going on in that church. If you're police, you should look into it, right? I'll talk to them. They're inside that thing there. Would be cool if you did. Was there something else? Did you put the padlock on the church door? No. No? Not really, no. So this isn't yours? It's Noid's. Wait, is this Noid a friend of yours? Yeah, I guess you could say that. Why did this Noid person put a padlock on the church door? To keep more weirdos from getting in. Fucking Martinez. I'm sorry. It's got the worst weirdos. If you get around to it, 
Ask Andre about him. He'll tell you. Enough about the church, then. I had another question. Go ahead. Okay. Bye. What was it? Wait, I need empathy? Is that what it was? Hello again. Yes. Do I have... Okay, well, first I need a hat. What's this? I mean... Fuck it. Okay, empathy, empathy, empathy. Okay. Still warm from her touch and heavy as a brick from the batteries inside. The company logo, Omicron, adorns its yellow plastic cover. Inside, the tape is rolling. The girl looks at the device in your hands. I'm sorry you have to sit here on the ice feeling miserable. At your age, or at any age in this weather, waiting for it to get dark. She looks you in the eye, her pupils wide, surrounded by a ridiculous amount of makeup. The people who built this world intended it to be better for you, but they failed. It is easier to live in their failure with this by your side. The wind howls. She remains silent. It's real. Tell her. It is not a childish fantasy. It can be a real weapon against what's coming for you now. What is? Nothing. You got this. I <laughs> forgot to get reminded. Oh god, there, Mike rose from the slums of San Batiste to the top of the boxing world, overcoming adversity and serious brain trauma. Nothing is coming. Nothing he wouldn't knock out in three rounds. The real fight is for the right attitude. Okay, we'll just say nothing if you got this. Don't be scared. Okay, I'll stick to it. Something changes between you two. She looks at you differently now. As an equal. A fellow human being. So thanks, I guess for the psych session. Maybe I can return it. What's been eating you, officer? Actually, that's it for now. So I gave her my tape recorder? Oh no, I still have it. Because I took the one that she had. All right. into the snow. Two poles are holding it up. Barely holding it up. It could fall over any minute. A stronger gust of wind might be enough. What is this? It looks like a makeshift bridge. Could be convenient. The pain falls into the icy snow with a soft thunk. Cool. I need to level up. What do I need for the ledger again? It's the ledger you found in the trash. Logic. Okay. Fine, I'll put a point in the logic. First point into the... Like... I'm gonna logic the fuck up with my clothes. found in the trash. A cabbage of papers hanging from the board. 
with the yes at last. You find a way to piece them together using the alphanumeric code on the margin. HDB 41, date of initialization and time of arrival on the scene, followed by the title. For example, HDB 41120117000, the next world mural. Why yes, your precinct number is 41. Every last alphanumeric in the files begins with it. And these are your case files. It's safe to say HDB are your initials. Harrier Dubois, HDB. Not much has changed in the meanwhile. Okay. Uh, later. Change anything else? Answer exactly the same. I guess, yeah, I can talk to Kim again. Back to putting logic on everything. <laughs> Yes? Look at you. It's because you're a failure. They sent you to slight Precinct 57. Just think about it for a second. You're a raging alcoholic who showed up three days late and argues with his necktie. You weren't sent here to win. Kim, what if my Precinct sent me on this case because I'm a fuck-up? Like, as a joke. I've considered it. That's true. It would be immensely ugly of them, not to mention unprofessional. But I also think it's somewhat unlikely. Why is that? I checked the records. This jurisdiction dispute, who polices Martinez, reaches back to the 30s. It's as old as my station. And all this time, we can't decide who gets Martinez? I think, yes, both stations would prefer a win. Huh, so you are their finest. I am the finest of nothing. You really see me as a safe bet? Safe? No. But you're old. You've made it this far. Something has brought you through. We've only just started working together, so I don't know what it is yet. But it's there. So no, I don't think they sent you as a joke. And even if they did, they are in for a surprise. He's right. There are no airtight theories. Just paranoia. You've given it some thought. Now let it go. Nice. This is someone's home away from home, just like yours. The tent is just tarpaulin fabric covering a pile of stuff. The flap is open. Inside, three young men are listening to some new form of music. It's like nothing you've ever heard. One of them looks at you. Come on, get in and close the flap behind you. The warm stuff's getting out. Sorry, we barely have room for one. You go ahead. I'm too old for this. I'm actually not, he thinks. I just dislike delinquents. I'm sure you will feel right at home. I'll keep watch.
Canister's filled with what appears to be water. Label says distilled. Isle of Nasal Sprays, brand name Nosafed Ultra. You see a youngish man bleaching the tips of his hair with a toothbrush. He puts the toothbrush down and extends his hand in greeting. Hello, I'm Andre. It's a pleasure to meet you. His grip is strong, sweaty, and warm. He's trying to project and inspire confidence. This is my posse, Noid. The young man with earrings looks at you suspiciously. An egghead. Egg! Mm-hmm. <laughs> Together with a little burger, who's out there right now, doing some seriously progressive sonic experimentation, we like to think of ourselves as music venue organizers. Wait, how many music venues have you organized? We have many in the pipeline, officer. Why are you here? You see, we've been all over Jamrock North, prospecting for real estate to establish a new venue in. Honest off for talent. Yeah, thank you, Egghead. And while there is no shortage of raw, unfettered talent spinning tapes in Jamrock, we've had rotten luck with the real estate part. Place is a shit hole. I, I apologize for my friend Noid's potty mouth. I realize this is not how you speak to a police officer. I I he has authority issues. There's no need. The place is pretty bad. Which brings me to the problem of occupied ecclesiastical property. I bet you've noticed the derelict hive of narcomania on the coast. An attempt to pander to your perceived conservative sensibilities. No person his age would ever use a word like narcomania with a straight face. Don't fall for it. Enough histrionics. What are you talk what are you talking about? I'm talking about the church. And I'm not exaggerating. Even a place of spiritual refuge can become a magnet for all sorts of dopeheads and burnouts if left unattended. Dopeheads! Burnouts. Well, I'm sad to say, that's exactly what happened. Sad because we were just about to put Martin A's on the map for one of the maddest dance clubs in Jamrock. Nah, strike that. In Revershall. Strike that! The world. And sadder yet, because the dope heads and burnouts hold up in there with the worst kind. He leans back a little, watching you with a steady, serious gaze, letting you imagine just how bad those dope heads and burnouts really are. Good. This calls for an opinion. You're an expert in those. I won't stand for narcomaniacs of any kind. No narcomaniacs on my watch. Yes, yes. And the worst part is. They're also spooky. What exactly do you mean by spooky? I was hoping you would be the judge of that, officer. All I can say is, their spookiness is the kind that keeps us from restoring this church into a community center and a place of spiritual refuge. Also, they don't eat or clean the building. Shit's gonna collapse. People just wanna spin tapes without them spooking it up. Place has bad signs. No one can dance like that. Thank you, Egghead. So you're gonna look into it, right? It should be a police matter. Getting them out. Whatever spooky stuff they're doing, I'm sure it's not what the Ecclesiastes meant their property for. I'll look into it. Tell me more. All right, man. Andre's obviously very happy you took him seriously. The whole tent is. The boys exchange giddy looks. The cell told me Noid put the, bla put the padlock on the door. Why? Oh, so you met her. Good, good. He's not as glad as he would like you to think. There's concern in his voice. I did ask Noy to install a measure against more drifters wandering in. It's a temporary fix, just something to contain the situation. I had to do it in an hurry. Not my best work, but it should hold for a while. I need the key. Of course. Noy, give the officer the key. All right. It's as if Jesus time is frozen somehow. You think you can sense the key moving in the air? Yeah. This is going to be way cool. Blam! Straight in the eye. Straight in the old eye orb. In the looking ball. A stabbing pain. Tears stream uncontrollably. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch, goddamn asshole. What is wrong with you? Can't you see I'm in pain now? Man, I'm super sorry. That was totally my bad. I got overexcited. Feeling too hard. I'm sorry. He looks like he's genuinely sorry. He didn't throw them better. I really am sorry, man. Just take what the this, fuck? okay? Well, wow. looks like there's quite a lot there. That's the least you could do. I don't really need money more since I'm not going to be... Alright, fuck I it. I hope that settles it. Or wait, the key... He is shifting in his spot, uncomfortably. 
still feeling sorry for the mishap. We were talking about the padlock, I think. How long have those people been locked in there? Not long. Like a week, maybe? How can you be sure they haven't starved to death? I'm super sure they're alive. I mean, come on. I'm at least 90%. Maybe 85% sure they're still alive. 85% is good enough. No one lives forever, baby. Exactly. That's exactly what we thought. The cage of the rage. Rough blaze. It means the situation is monitored. It's relatively safe. No one has died yet. Right. Other questions. Sure, man. Tell us what you want to know. Let's do it. Who exactly are these people inside the church? Truth is, I don't really know. None of us do. I don't even know how many there are. All we've seen are glimpses. You haven't even seen them and you want the police involved? Well, there's also the machinery. This machinery is of the deeply mystical variety. When I first scouted the place, back in February, it was abandoned, empty. Took some time getting the crew together. So about two weeks ago, we came here hoping to set the stuff up. Suddenly, there are all these strange machines lying around in there. One of them has wires running into bowls of water. Wires into water. Never seen anything like it. Andre, tell him about the feeling. Oh, and it felt like there was something in there with us, watching us from the dark. No, the other one. Um, which other one? I'm not as in tune with my emotions as you are, Egg. Felt like silence. Awful silence. For this man, even regular silence is awful enough. But that was something greater. You haven't physically seen anyone. Not exactly. We've just seen someone who we think is a woman go in and out of the church a couple of times. And we felt someone or something eyeing us inside. But that's kind of it. What was that about something watching you? Like you aren't alone, you know? It wasn't quite human, if you know what I mean. It was this dark shape climbing upside down along the ceiling, like some kind of crab man. A crab man? Yeah, you know, the way it was climbing up and around the ceiling, like a crab. It was stalking a cell, exhibiting ambush behavior. Ambush behavior. Crab man. Crab man! Yeah, totally. I mean, I didn't personally see it. A cell was alone that time, but I believe her. If she comes out running and says there's a crab in there, there's a crab in there. You should ask her about it, but be nice. Don't tell her you don't believe in the crab. The implications of this are too numerous to consider. Proceed with caution. Learn all you can before entering that dark building. Can you tell me more about this machinery? You should talk to Noid about that. I just got a distinct burnout and dopehead sign from them. Probably jacked up to some snuff station too. Probably very likely. With a small surge of PEA, alertness fills you. As if to say, this is a dark corner. Look behind it. Jacked up to some snuff station? It means like one of those rich boy private radio stations where you can listen to people getting killed on and jerk off to it. Sick shit. Not that we would know anything about that. Noid just likes to relay stuff. We're getting derailed here. In short, you can tell to Noid about the machines. He'll tell you more. So how can you be sure they're burnouts and dope heads if you haven't s even seen them? Well, honestly, I can't, but I am. Why not? Let's go with that. I don't see a single thing wrong with that argument. I'm 70% sure they're substance users. Don't let the technology fool you. All right, let's talk about something else. Sure. What? You mentioned some kind of Ecclesiastes owned the church. Who are these Ecclesiastes? Oh, yeah. That's a meteor and name for the founding party. Thought it'd be cool to use it. Before we go on, what do you mean by meteorin? You know, of Meteo. Concerning Meteo. Meteo? Meteo. A country. On Muindi. On the Muindi Isola. Oh, the founding party. Okay, no. And what is the... F oh, okay. Come to think of it, I've never really looked them up, you know? I can't give you a precise definition, but they're a very powerful religious organization. And? And they have roots in ancient mass society. And they're the custodians of the Pericanesian church. Plus, they anoint the innocents. They, like, made the innocentic system, no? They sound like exactly the kind of who would want a loud, anodic music in their church. You're right, they do. The Pericanesian church is about love. 
And Nordic music is about love. I got love for my pericanassian posse. Love is the relay out of death. We dance. <laughs> love is hardcore. True. Unity. Unity. Make some noise for my insulindian posse. You feel it. The anodes and the cathodes coursing through you. Your big toe starts tapping along to the base. As feels good. I don't quite understand what you're talking about. What's a posse? Your posse's like your people, man. Like you got your cup posse. You look out for each other and you party together. That's a posse. And where is your posse, detective? Nothing comes to you. The world is silent. I guess love can be pretty hardcore. Oh yeah, it can. He's coming around. You're getting it. Um, you're right. How could the founding party be anything but enthusiastic? Dance music is about love, and so is the Paracarnassian church. Yeah! Yako Qatar! The place to be! He seems ecstatic that you share his vision of Paracarnassianism. Do it for the masses. Do it for the crew. I didn't want to say it, but it was pretty lame of you to imply otherwise. Anyway, you got more questions? The one with the large head is still looking at you, nodding his head, waiting for your body to start moving. Yeah! Let it out! Let the disco happen! Bring the disco into this world! Get this church shit on, and then dance there, motherfucker! <laughs> you feel like you can go for a little disco when, or if, they get this club going. You've got it in you. I wanted to ask you about this tent full of equipment. Yes. What? See, so you brought your own water. Yeah, yeah. Good to have. Bitch to carry. When I first scattered the place, I did some reconnaissance. I'm not sure the church even is running water. It's still too. Uh, oh. It's the one they sell at the fuel station. What's with all the Nosafed? The what now? The Nosafed Ultra. You have a lot of it lying around. Oh, the old Ultra. We... Um... I have a major sinus infection. Stuffy nose. We all do. Shit's all blasted up. Winter. Can't even breathe. Sound fine to me. Yes. That's all Nosafed's doing. Without the Nosa, I'd be drowning in shit right now. Nosafed is the shit. I have some? I have some nose problems too. Um, sure. Here you go, officer. The Nosa. Blast the way. Alright, enough of this. He nods enthusiastically. No doubt, a little relieved. As always, we'll be right here, waiting patiently for the news. Yeah! Motorway South. The lone vector stretches in your mind's eye into the wild pale yonder, for an unimaginable distance, forgetting, forgetting, until you can no longer remember anything. No cities, no mountains, no oceans, and finally, no vector. Nothing remains. A blank space with no point of reference, where only one type of motion is possible. The motion of a human throat swallowing, and then it comes to you. To reach the end of the motorway south is to be unborn. You've had this thought before, while aimlessly wandering the streets of Jamrock. A lost piece of the man you were. A dark hope. I don't know what this ambience is. I think it might just be from um, the ice, but I feel like it accented the solution pretty well. All inner like white chicks unlocked, plus one inland empire and a swallowing motion. Hell yeah. Hang on, gotta, gotta logic up again. I've done that so much already. Hi again. So, uh, how things going? As always. Wait, what the fuck? My logic is seven. Hi again. So, uh, how things going? Arcomania is a plague. Okay, so the Speed Freaks want to start a club for dance music. That much checks out. 
Youths like music. You feel as though you might have liked music more when you were young, too. But you digress. Indeed, so one of them came upon the abandoned church. They want to turn it into a club for dance music, but agents of narcomania have overrun it. You shudder to think of all the narco they must have already consumed in there. Narco is bad. Plus, and it has to be considered, you can't invent the future of dance music in this smelly old tent. Imagine if you had the church. That settles it. Analysis complete. Their story checks out. It still feels as if this didn't quite go as it should have. But... As always, we'll be... Oh well. So you had a talk with Andre, and now you want to discuss things with Lloyd. Good. It's good you talked to Andre first. Gave me time to get a reading on your sign. Can't really talk to people before you get a reading. Sign? Yeah. Gotta compare. See if we can align. Interesting. I suck at socializing, man. Even now, our sign synchronization is way off. But I'll see what I can do. I saw a sticker on the padlock. Can you tell me anything, tell me anything about it? A sticker? You mean the yellow one? Can you describe it to me? What's this one? Are you familiar with it? Seems like my creation has found its way into the legal bureaucracy. What did you want to ask about it? What's it supposed to be? The dead guy smiling. And what does it mean? Why is the dead guy smiling? He defeated history. We are living in the age of history, and in the eyes of history, we are always already dead. How can we ever smile then? Because history is a lie, and so are its deaths. The present moment and life are the hardcore. The hardcore expels death. Or maybe he's not dead. Maybe he's just really ecstatic about the beats. Or drugged out of his mind, come to think of it. I'm thinking maybe the smiling dead guy is a symbol for communism. It's also dead, but it doesn't care. Yeah, that interpretation holds. I think we've exhausted the subject for now. Well, I guess one could write an entire treatise on the thing. But what for? What about now? Are the signs alright now? Nah. Hmm. Still strongly out of sync. Stage gamma disalignment. What? You heard me. Tell me about the machines you saw in the church. Weird stuff. Specialized. There was a data processor and some sort of long wave machinery. Wires going into water. Gives off a spy sign. Or some fucked up Samaran science sign. You know, the kind that goes head first into the supernatural. What's wrong with the supernatural? Nothing's wrong with it. You should definitely be researched. You can still do sick shit with it, though. The sickest. That's perhaps why it should be researched. I'm privy to the supernatural arts, you a believer too? Most of it doesn't exist. But there's also stuff that isn't allowed to exist. Because the moralists think it's too dangerous for the plebs. Psionic powers, pale-related diseases, pretenders pretending to be human, folk rights, that kind of stuff. Why are you called Noid? The hardcore aesthetic is esoteric. It's not meant to be discussed with the law at this moment. It's not easy to reach a harmonic resonance of signs without some adjustment. Does this mean we need sign matching? Yes. Further sign matching would do good for us. One way to achieve this would be by getting us into the church. Okay, maybe I'll come back later. A young man with peroxide blonde hair holds up a Harmon Walshy tape player, nodding along to the music. He looks at you with a knowing smile and says, as though you're supposed to be sharing some tremendous evangelical secret. Hardcore! Is it? It's hardcore! You're just gonna keep saying it's hardcore, aren't you? Skip a D, skip a danger. I am the rearranger. Could there have been a right way out of this garden of forking paths, you think? All right. The shaggy haired girl kneels on the sea ice. She looks up as you approach. 
So you talk to my associates, right? Are you gonna help us? With the church, I mean. I'll help you alright. Great. Let us know if there's any progress, will ya? We've been waiting for weeks here. The others told me you went inside the church. What did you see in there? Oh, that. You're not gonna believe me. There's no point in me telling you. We'll see. Go ahead and tell me. Okay. I went in and I saw a woman next to one of those machines there. Noid calls it a mainframe. She was dressed like someone who's been raised by their grandmother. You know, strange old clothes. Had this absent expression, didn't say anything, just stood still. Go on. And then, you know, right behind her, a man crawled down the wall. Upside down like a crab, down the church wall. I think the woman didn't even know he was there. He was completely silent. He stopped right before he got to the floor, then just hung there like that, looking at me, right at me. I fucking turned around and walked out. End of story. Like a crab, you say? What does crab man look like? It was too dark. I couldn't tell exactly. You were wrong. I do believe you. Why? What would you stand to gain? Nothing. Anyway, what else? I'd like to know more about your associates. My associates? I haven't got much to say about them. What do you mean? You must know something about them. Of course I do. I just don't tell people about my friends and who they are and so on. I don't provide information on them. What about you? Tell me something about yourself. Me? I'm a silver bird. High above and to the east, the cold winds blow over the feathers of an early songbird. She lands on the stone ledge of a tall building, her beak a silvery grey. Aha. Okay, maybe I'll ask about all this. Maybe I'll ask later about all this. Don't know what makes you think it'll be any different later, but... Okay. Oh, let's get in the church. Heavy wooden doors. The lock turns easily. You hear a click as the shackle pops open. Feels like electricity and a very small piece of nothingness. Let's go. As you do, you hear the echo of the Doom commercial area, its black holes and dusty oh. machines. Then the feeling passes. Because of the two millimeter hole, fucking with the Doom commercial area. A great whoosh of air rushes into the dark innards of the church, as though rushing to fill a great vacuum in the heart of the city. A strange stillness fills you as you look ahead. You should walk here, not run. More of the forked lighting pattern you saw outside. This grotesque wooden figure looks half finished. Feels like it's tr trying to become one with the church. I don't remember if you can actually run here, but whatever. I'll do what it says. The blackboard is filled with complex equations. They look recent. Something to do with radio frequencies? Two decks of reel to reel tape spinning on empty. Cold wind blows in from the broken gallery. Makes your skin crawl. Portable and Harman Wauschi tape recorder. Someone siphoning electrical current from outside into this antenna. In white, silver, and apricot fields, the young mother of humanism stands above you. A crack runs across her body. She is impossibly tall, oval-faced and sad. A dark and radiant majesty. This is her innocence, Dolores Day. Cradled in her arms are a pair of glowing lungs, clearly visible from underneath her flowing dress. You should kneel. No. Um. 
don't know. Um, is this gonna like fuck me later on? I don't know. No. Cold wind seeps in from the crack in the glass. Snowdrifts cover the floorboards at your feet. Above, you feel her multicolored eyes on you, inspecting you, as if under a microscope. No, I am not your bug. As that bitter thought passes through your head, the lieutenant draws an X-shaped cross from shoulder to shoulder with three fingers. Good call. She left us all in the shits. Don't give her a single thing. Just stand there in the apricot-colored light of the window, secretly grinding your teeth. The woman smiles her distant smile, unmoved, struck in half by the crack in the glass. Serves her right. She only cares about her sovereign's orb and her silk robes and get into the aerodrome on time to leave. This is Dolores Day. The old woman in the village was right. This must be the Dolorean Church of Humanity in Martinez, or the small Pinewood Church in some records. You knew of the place? It's a minor landmark, not easy to find. Most maps misplace it. It was built not long after Revachol's founding, 300 or so years ago, by first-generation settlers. What else do you know? There used to be seven stiff churches on the coast. Les Setsa, they call them, the Seven Sisters. Only one remains. The rest were burnt in the revolution or used for building materials. We should be respectful here, although the building appears to be deserted. I do not believe we'll find anything connected to the lynching here. Something else, perhaps? A pang of guilt. The lieutenant is leaving something out. You know why it was abandoned? I have a theory, yes. There was a police raid a while back. I heard the place was shut to pieces. The old woman in the village was being tactful with us when she didn't mention it. She has more respect for the RCM than many around here. Who conducted this raid? Well, your station was involved, I hear. Although I can't be sure. You're not sure? Three precincts were involved in the raid, and people say Precinct 41 was one of them. I don't remember being here. I am pretty sure it was a clandestine operation. I don't know anything more about it why it was conducted or who participated. I try not to pry into extra district matters. If I was here, I should find out what I was doing. Good luck. You will not get information on a confidential operation from your station secretary just by calling. If you really don't remember, it might be better to keep this one forgotten. It happened a while ago. It's an important to our business in Martinez now. It's like Wikipedia, huh? The mother of humanism stands above you. Oppressed despite the damage you've done to yourself, the title appears lodged in your hippocampus. This is her innocence, Dolores Day. The innocence of humanism, internationalism, and the welfare state. Perhaps the most famous human being ever to have lived. No amount of Commodore Red can wipe her sad smile from your brain thing. It has survived the deluge and haunts you still. And will haunt you forever, as it haunts all men. The highest category of historic individual, an embodiment of the world spirit. Tyrant? In a way, an innocence is elected to office by the founding party, a precedent that has taken place a mere six times in the entirety of history. The legal system of the Real Belt is built from the ground up to accommodate innocentic rule should it coincide with our time. An innocence is infallible. The decisions made by one are not decisions. They are inevitabilities. What would have happened anyway? Only accelerated, packed into decades instead of centuries. An innocence is a continuous compressed event. 
a sacred human being. It is an honor and a glory to live when one is in office. Is one in office now? No, we are alone. Okay, when did she rule? 300 years ago, in the wake of the discovery of this Isola, the Insulindian, by explorers from the continent of Muwindi. She is, among other things, the innocence of inter-isolary travel and the connected world. What else do I know about her? Many things. You know she was a woman of the court, the wife of an influential Marchese, and eventually the principal advisor to Irene la Navigateur, Queen of Serene, modern-day Sir La Clay. Also, that she was gorgeous beyond beauty. Draped in ancient sadness. Are you sure you want to remember this bit of historic trivia? Standing under a long slender form like this? Dwarfed? Yes! Big bummer! Boring history! Gotta keep it light, man! Keep it moving! Get fucked up instead! Where is this coming from? The past. It's a silo of sadness. Fermenting. You should keep away. Fuck this pain, Bratan! It's unhealthy! Right, better not to go poking any further. Okay, what else? Was she smart? Terribly. Women of the court were expected to play both contract bridge and chess sufficiently well to prove an interesting challenge to a man. A simple grasp in matters of philosophy, theology, and science was encouraged. She was, by all means, a kept woman. She made the most of her position in the Antidelorian court, a court visited by the most prominent thinkers and artists of the day. In secret, she was becoming the era's preeminent philosopher of the state, a scalpel, a piercing gaze. She was an almost preternaturally magnetic and intelligent individual. To her contemporaries, she appeared out of time, a messenger from the future of the species. We all fell in love with her, head over heels. Even before she was declared an innocence, her influence was tremendous. It was on her advice that Irene Le Navigateur sponsored a number of voyages into the Pale. A costly, often tragic endeavor, ultimately vindicated by the discovery of the new, new world. The piece of reality you're standing on. She was crowned two years after the first expedition returned, setting in motion what is widely considered the greatest era in history. The DeLorean era. I don't care. Okay. When her innocence was declared, and the queen she had advised for years fell on her knees before her, she was so overcome with emotion that her lungs started glowing in her chest. Bystanders reported golden filaments lighting the already sunlit chamber around her, clearly visible beneath her dress. I repeat, her lungs started glowing. Do you care now? As did we all. The lands of the Mesk and the Occident, and even far away Supra Mwindi. Altogether, 21 of the 40 Mundial nations of the time immediately accepted Innocentic rule, even before her crowning. In a city called Advesperaskit in Vespa Messina, her homeland, the name of the city means evening comes, but it happened on a winter's morning with the canals frozen and slush falling out of the sky. She was dressed in a white and pearl dress on an emptied out plaza with the crowd far away. Already her Therias, the secret servicemen of the innocents, were worried about an assassination attempt. Oh, she was insultingly beautiful. She was humanity's young mother, a perfect mother. It was as if her face and shoulders and hands were covered in a soft down of underfeathers. You know this well, very well. Midwinter snow was beating the cobblestones around her. A small attaché of officials stood by as her therriers placed a white gold wreath on her head. The crowning was mostly witnessed by secret servicemen. One of the men in this secret service killed her 22 years later. A young man who had come to suspect that Dolores' day was not entirely human. 
but something else. Something that had walked in our midst, watching us stumble for hundreds, if not thousands of years, until it decided to interfere, interfere in the course of our history. We were supposed to come up with this ourselves. The man was reported to have screamed at the innocents. Dolores Day was shot in the chest with a fowling piece eight times. The man, thought to be insane, said he once touched her and her body had been unnaturally warm, like a furnace, and that sometimes, while on duty, he observed her forgetting to breathe for over ten minutes. This inhuman quality was witnessed by many others as well, glowing lungs and all. It is commonly attributed to mass hysteria and religious psychology. Terrifying is a term too emotionally charged for your semantic memory, or what remains of it. But terrifying, it's a simple word. She was bad for humanity, and you shouldn't have started thinking about her. You already do, although she's often considered to be the greatest human being to ever live. There was something ominous about Dolores Day, constantly surrounded by her thereas. She was the most socially secluded and least self-aware of all the innocences. Some modern thinkers would consider her a war criminal for the campaigns she waged against the Mesk state. And then there were the resettlement programs. The Mesk state tried to detach itself from innocentic rule. Parts of the world were experiencing whiplash from accelerating into secularism. Her mandatory education programs and mass resettlement of upstream Marguerite were problematic as well. Dissenters were suppressed by a military force she called the Army of Humanity. She adored chess, yes, but also military war games. Dolores Day often holds a tiny tin soldier between her index finger and thumb in icons such as this. She was also blonde, the blondest woman you have ever seen, with green eyes the color of the Pacific, Mare Interregnum. Little is known of her Marchese husband. It's as if he vanished from history after completing his role, which was to introduce Dolores Day to court. In conclusion, yes, there is something lonely, paranoid, and even terrifying that people seldom mention, but feel when they think of her. Lieutenant Yefreiter, you've stood there for over five minutes. What are you thinking of, if I may ask? War criminal. I don't know about that. It was a different time, a different war. Either way, this church, the coast in general, we shouldn't linger here. This isn't a good place to get lost in. We should conclude our business and move on. Visual calculus, huh? save just because it's been a while probably gonna fail this check anyway the mother of humanism stands above you a jigsaw oh. of broken shards falls to place in front of you a ghostly reconstruction of the stained glass window what did i roll before it was shattered there was an older woman beneath the younger one and a text a light motif below them both unknown The escutcheon on her throne says, Irene the Navigator. She is depicted as an older woman wearing thick-rimmed eyeglasses, holding a golden rites apfel in one hand and a scepter in the other. This is the queen her innocence day advised. Above, she herself is whole. Small figures of wise men, common men, worshippers walk up the stairs to stand at her feet. Secret servicemen, 30 years, stand in a row guarding her. It must have taken years to produce this work in all its dizzying detail. 
below both women in luminous black letters. Après la vie, mort. Après la mort, la vie de nouveau. And then along the left side, après le monde, la gris. Après le gris, le monde de nouveau. Lieutenant, this used to say after life, death, after death, life again. After the world, the pale. After the pale, the world again. This exaltation is common in Dolorian sacralism. In the early years, it was even incorporated as the RCM slogan. No more, however. Why? It was deemed subservient to use a strongly moral intern related motto. We already suspected of bootlicking. The sentence was also seen as too feminine. It was a macho thing. What is the RCM motto now? Justice, union, prudence, and force. Cool. Ice cool. The mother of humanism towers above you. A wax painting on a cracked pane of glass. Nothing has changed in her expression. stands in the corner, watched over by the figures on the stained glass window. It's turned on and quivering with soft electricity. Another radio computer. And this time it's already turned on. These machines sometimes harbor traps, he thinks. Alarm systems and the like. Let's be careful. We should leave. I doubt this place bears any connection to the case. Yes, but this machine looks just like the one in the Doom commercial area. It's also quite similar to the one we have down at the station. Must be the same model. The one you saw earlier was the Ream Civic. This is the Ream Prefect. A model number RC7024. Equipped with a Feld mainframe and a Ream compatible interim printer. Wait, let me just investigate it. You see fluorescent play and print buttons on the keyboard. A hatch connected to the central compartment is wide open. The lieutenant says nothing. You see the machine's glowing frame reflected back from his diamond-shaped glasses. You're free to proceed. Behind the hatch sits a cube-like crisscross of filaments, smoldering in the dark like fireflies. Silver tape on the side says, in black marker, Log, February to March. Another filament memory. Press play to talk with the repeater. The speaker comes to life. Static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. An old lady greets you. Her voice sounds a hundred years old. Good afternoon, Fortress Accident on San Brune. This is the East Insulindian Repeater Station 1. Please repeat. Is this the personal log? It's the same old woman you spoke with through the radio computer in the doomed commercial area. Yvonne, it's me again. How are you? Good, thank you. Please repeat. Is this the personal log? I looked inside the core, but the table on the filament just said log February through March. Good. Please repeat the password. Let's look around. There's no use trying to guess the answer. Uh, I don't know the password. Received. I will register this login attempt. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Excellent. Uh, like the one in the Doom commercial area? I have two machines registered to this company name in Martinez. One on Saint Brune, the other on Rue de Saint Guilaine. Saint Brune, that's the church. And Rue de Saint Guilaine, that's the Doom commercial area. Anything else I can help you with? Thanks, but I'm finished with this call. Goodbye, for twice accident. The machine's keyboard is still illuminated, revealing fluorescent play and print buttons. Nothing happens. Okay. Best bangers, red bruise. 
These dapper snakeskin shoes have an almost invisible white on white flower motif sewn on the tongue. Uh, the toe caps are still dusty from going in the church. Someone else's shoes. Sure. Nazzy. Hey, her innocence Dolores Day liked little figurines, right? Liked older little men between her fingers, remember? What? You have the headless Farron Rider figurine. You should give it to her. Win her back. What? Win who back? I can't win her back. She's a long dead historical figure. Don't be so pessimistic. Love doesn't die that easily. This isn't funny. You have a bad feeling about this one. I did not do this in my first playthrough, so I'm gonna hit. I should, yes. This is a task of mine now. So very, very, very nifty. Nifty and mysterious. This is surely what the figurines are for. How am I doing? Offer figurines to Dolores Day. Oh, is this for the thing at the end? The mother of humanism stands above you. A precious and complex wax painting on a single pane of glass. A crack runs across the length of her body, her face oval and sad. Why? That does seem to be a problem. Maybe you meant something else? I don't know. What are we thinking of? Part of your mind has gone on to other things already. Only a strange little sadness remains. The mother of you. Okay. I'm assuming that's for the end. Also with water and a live water, live wire runs directly into it. These wires work as a contact microphone. The silence in this part of the church. It's almost palpable. All the shifting matter and shuffling of living things is gone. Nothing seems to exist beyond the church anymore. Maybe if you were to stand in just the right spot, even your footsteps would be completely silent. And then it's gone. Almost all of it. But for the faintest of hums, you can hardly hear your own breathing. Your voice is barely audible. Not a howl. But the softest of whimpers, it's unnerving. You produce a few muffled thumps, after which the silence feels even more total, somehow. The lieutenant points to his ears and shakes his head. Then he leans closer. Can you hear anything? Not really, but it's extraordinary. I've never experienced anything like this. I wonder why the church was built with such strange acoustics. His detached tone conceals how uncomfortable he is. What if it's something paranatural? Please, detective. Not this again. He's trying to act dismissive, but at this particular moment, he's more open than usual to the idea of paranatural phenomena. The orderly rows of ceiling panels become barely visible, then disappear completely in the darkness of the tower overhead. The silence, the darkness, they've enveloped you as in a cocoon. You cannot move anymore. Relax. It'll be okay. Oh ho. Here he comes. It's like there's something moving up there. A shadow has emerged from the tower and it's making its way toward you through all the other shadows. Yes, the darkness makes the ceiling feel infinitely far away. It's climbing. Climbing down, holding on the beams. It's not a shadow anymore. Becoming more substantial as it gets closer, the shape of an animal descends. Officer, is there something up there? Oh no, you've lost sight of it. Where did it go? You see something hanging from the rafters, looking straight at you with dark eyes. Maybe it's possible to talk to it. The shadow is 
A man? A man made of the same stuff as the carpentry of the building. He is studying you intently. A crab man? The man leaned forward a little, fixing you with a steady, unreadable gaze, then speaks. Habitual alcohol use has made you into a scared little pussy, Holmes. But don't worry. Everything's gonna be all right. You come to the right place. Right place for what? Here you can receive the mother's love. And when you're ready, she will take your hand and lift you out of the despair at the bottom of that bottle. This man is obviously a habitual narcotics user. Do we really need to question him? I'm put off by this religious stuff, he thinks. And maybe the ceiling climbing, too. It's all very hard to square with the lieutenant's own view of reality. Hey, and what was that about the bottle again? You haven't even drank that much lately. Lay off it already. Shish. Well, I guess I have a bit of a problem. It's been getting out of hand lately, but... Is that cruel the way? I see deep inside... Oh, Mexican. <laughs> your body and your spirit are suffering greatly from overindulgement. And you don't even know it. I'm actually here on behalf. Okay, I'm very in touch with my suffering. Not all of it. I was like you once. You don't know all the havoc El Vino is wrecking on your mind and your spirit. Necesita parar, homie. You know, actually, since we're here, you may want to pay attention <laughs> to what the ceiling climber is saying. Look at these crazies. What is this shit? Uh, for some reason, I feel like you have a point there. Don't trust me. Trust the mother. I'm only the messenger, Holmes. This is the church of the mother of silence. You are welcome here. This mother of silence sounds like a serious player. You might want to be careful until you find out what you're dealing with. You must be the crab man. Never know myself to be a crab. But if that's the name you got for me, I won't stop you from using it. If you're not a crab, then what are you? I always thought of myself more like a flame flickering along the rafters and beams. It may be that I gotta work on my technique. What were you before you became a crab man? I was in a gang way, but my memories of that time are fading. Most of them are already gone. Uh... So many people losing their memory is certain portent of doom. Okay, no. I lost my memory too, but I like it. It's like I get to create a whole new me, start from scratch. That's not really the point, I say. You gotta give yourself over to service. Service of the mother, that is. Do you remember your name, sir? Tiago's my name. But those syllables don't mean much to me these days. My name isn't just your identity. But also, so to speak, your place amongst your fellows, your place in the world. I ain't got no use for such a place anymore. My name's Harry. That's just the thing, Holmes. None of that matters. What are you doing here? This is a special place. There's a perforation in the world up there. A way out into nothingness. This church was built around it for purposes of veneration. I circled it, nurtured by the silence bestowed by the mother. One of these days, I'd be pure enough to go drink from it directly. What will happen once you drink from this perforation? I will be incinerated, but not destroyed. Finally, I won with the state of the world before reality began. This mother of silence, you mean her? No, no, no. There's a new god in town. And she can be painted or sculpted. Because she has no limb or even a face. She is the end. She is a cavity in the dark beyond sense. She saved me. But I couldn't describe her to you. No one can, Holmes. And no one ever will. His adoration is beyond sexual. This cavity is something that no human form has. Um, 
sure you didn't just switch one drug for another? It's not like that at all, man. It's just faith and joyful service. Maybe this is a kind of drug. I heard that before, Way. And I know I can't convince you on the spot. But think, when's the last time you woke up from silent communion with a hangover, regretting what you did last night? There are drugs darker than alcohol circling your system. Love might have been my drug of choice. I think I'm still hungover from it. She took you for a good spin, huh? Don't worry, bro. That love is but a drop compared to the ocean of the mother's love. The mother will eat all of you and never spit you out. You see, have a point. I know it will take time. Don't sweat it. I still don't understand what you're doing in the church. I know it will take time. Oh. Don't sweat it. Okay. I'm a seraph, Holmes. I sing the mother's glory. Uh, she for me the superstar cup. I am from No Marietti, if that's what you're thinking. And the song I sing is Silent as the Mother. How did you even find this place, this church? Hard to say. I think I did some construction work here, back when I still had material worries. Up there, I realized what the true purpose of the church was. Been spending a lot of time here ever since. The past is nothing to me now, way. Eh? It didn't belong to me. Are these your shoes lying around here? I think they were. A long time ago. I had to shed them like skins to get closer to the center of the silence. You could have them. I don't need them anymore. The sinewy figure lingers on the wooden beams, blending into the shadows. Been here for a long time. Did you see the police raid that took place here? <sighs> Something like that. Did you witness it? Not really. Or at least I don't remember much of it anymore. The mother's love has done its job. That's what's so great about the mother. It lets you forget about everything. The Moravers want to turn this place into a nightclub. The ones in the tent outside? Right? I see them. Guessing they're the ones who call me a crab. Probably scared of me. Wait, do they have a reason to be scared? Nah, man. They look pretty funny. And I don't harm no one anymore. Anyway. Though he used to. A long time ago. What do you think about the nightclub that is? Why not? They wouldn't bother me none. I'm usually way up there, imbibing. Ain't no music on earth that can reach where I go. Might even be nice to have some company. He said that in spite of himself. He's more attached to the human than he'd like to think. You know where the other spooker is? Other spooker? Oh, esa viejita es muy estudiosa. <laughs> Don't know, Holmes. Wait, so there is another person living in the church, and it's a viejita? No. I just call her viejita because of her clothes. She's actually quite young. Or maybe not that young. H is just one of the many masks we wear. Hey, you don't know where she is? That's what I said, Holmes. How do you not know that when you both live here? Don't really follow her comings and goings. Just see her typing on her computer now and then. We got different interests. So you got nothing else to tell me? How she looks, what she does, who is she? I'm afraid not, S.A. You just have to wait until she comes back, or... Or search through her radio computer. By any chance heard the viejita say the password to her radio computer? Too many times, S.A. You need it for something. Honestly, I just want to break into a radio computer and see what's on it. Don't sweat it, vato. The password is afterlife death. That is true. But what comes after death? What you think of that? Makes me almost pity La Nilita Pequeña when I hear it. Okay, then thanks. I think we're done here, Esse. That was an interesting conversation. However, I'm still not sure how it's relevant to our investigation. Don't worry about it, Kim. Cracked pane of glass, colorful. Frost has drawn flowers on the glass, obscuring the view. Figure drawn in frost on the window, depicting a deer. 
Nice banger silk scarf. Bangers don't cry. This huge red scarf is still dusty from lying in the church. A subtle red on red embroidery embellishes it with cocky roosters and mesk floral motifs. Brought to your attention that you're an alcoholic and that it's a sickness and it's killing you. You're crawling on your knees through life, your booze filled belly dragging on the ground, your brain now fuzzy, now in overdrive. Your hair sticking together with today's cold sweat and yesterday's vomit, and perhaps they're right. Anything is better than this, even bone dry reality itself. Maybe you can quit. Love raw dogging reality. Think about the skill point next time. What is this about the cockatoo? A cockatoo is a this book talks about the delicate nature. Okay, all right. All right, we'll do this shit later. 